So, good uh, afternoon. Are you able to see our slides? Yep, that's working perfectly. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I'm Henry Gode, a first year PhD student, and together with Marvin Tamman, we will present our contributions to the Clarity Enhancement Challenge 2021, um, the systems E16, 19, and 21. Our team belongs to the University of Oldenburg. Since the scenario and goal of the Clarity Challenge was described already by others, we will jump directly into an overview of our submitted systems. After we explain the concepts of the underlying algorithms, we present the experimental evaluation and conclude the work. Our systems tackling the scenario are combinations of up to three cascaded blocks. As first processing stage, we designed a convolutional beamformer aiming at de reverberation and interfere reduction. And of course, it should preserve the target. After this, to further reduce residual noise, we designed an optional DNN-based post filter. The last stage aims at increasing intelligibility for a specific hearing impaired listener by listener dependent hearing loss compensation. I will now present the concept of the weighted binaural linear constraint minimum power beamformer, in short, WBLCMP. It originates from the widely known MPDR beamformer, which aims at reducing um, noise by minimization of the overall output power. Using this as the only objective, the filter would reduce all noise, but also all of the target. And this is fixed by introducing a distortionless constraint, assuming that the relative transfer function of the target is known or can be estimated. As an extension of the this, the weighted MPDR beamformer includes both objectives from the conventional MPDR beamformer, plus the goal of de reverberation, which is achieved by a multi-frame approach. Unfortunately, there's no analytic solution to this optimization problem. However, local maximum can be found using an iterative reweighted optimization approach containing the weights beta. Further extending the weighted MPDR beamformer, um, the weighted LCMP beamformer generalizes the concept with one constraint to multiple constraints. Since there's one interfere in the clarity scenario, it is possible to introduce a second constraint which suppresses the interfere with a factor delta. However, this is only possible, of course, if the interferer relative transfer function is available and can be estimated. Additionally, to all of this objective, we introduce certain add-ons. We inserted a shape parameter, which is able to control the sparsity of the cost function of the WVLCMP beamformer. We formulated a recursive version allowing to handle non-stationary scenarios, although that is not needed for the clarity challenge. And of course, we performed the beamforming with two reference channels to gain binaural output signals preserving the queues. Going a bit more in detail, we optimized this filter by minimizing a sparse version of the output power using an LP norm in the cost function, where the shape parameter P controls the sparsity. The factor gamma represents the exponential window for the recursive version. In order to keep direct and early reflections of the target, but suppress those of the interfere, we introduced two linear constraints using the relative transfer functions of the target and interfere respectively. The one here forces a distortionless target output and the delta is the suppressing factor for the interferer. As already mentioned, there's no analytic solution to this optimization problem. However, local maximum can be found using an iterative approach. In each iteration, the LP norm cost function seen before is replaced with a reweighted L2 norm cost function, having a two here where there was a P before. And the, re uh, the weights better are introduced to do the reweightening. The solution to this filter is give, uh, given here, and it is, contains the relative transfer functions of the target and the interfere, of course, C tilde, and the constraint one and delta, and the Reweighted covariance matrix R bar, which itself contains the weights better in its definition. 
The weights better are then updated in each iteration using the filter output like this. There, the shape parameter also uh, yeah, is contained in the formula in the update. The new weights are used in the next iteration to update the filter again. This procedure is executed until convergence. As seen in the previous derivations, the algorithm depends on the relative transfer function of the target and the interferer. In real life scenarios, it is difficult to estimate these RTFs. However, in the clarity challenge, we can take advantage of the scenario, allowing us to use the first two seconds to estimate the interferer RTF. And from two seconds on, we can estimate the target RTF using covariance whitening. The used STFT framework has a frame length of five milliseconds to, um, yeah, because of the causality constraints and 50% overlap. And the interferer suppression um, yeah, was chosen to be delta equals 0 0.1 to have a minimum gain, not suppressing all of the interferer in the first two seconds to, yeah, for the listeners to be able to know which voice is interferer and which is uh, target. The shape parameter controlled for controlling the sparsity was chosen to be 0 0.5. Now Marvin Tamman takes over to explain the DNN post filter. Uh, thanks, Andre, and hello. Um, let's continue here. All right, yeah. So let's continue with the optional DNN-based post filter. So the aim of this post filter is to decrease any residual noise that is contained in the output of the beamformer before it, in order to result in a cleaner signal in the hearing, uh, hearing loss compensation stage. So in order to motivate the filter we are using here, the so-called deep binaural multi-frame MVDR filter, which is a rather long name to say, um, I want to draw some analogies starting from the conventional minimum variance distortionist response beamformer that we also heard about before. Um, so the MVDR usually is a multi-microphone single uh, frame approach. Replacing the multiple microphones with multiple frames, we are arriving at the multi-frame MVDR filter. So instead of considering spatial correlations as is done in the MVDR approach, we are co um, considering temporal correlations instead. Usually in the MVDR signal model, the speech component is modeled, so the speech component X is modeled using some source signal S that is multiplied with a vector V. And this vector usually describes the correlations um, of the speech component at different microphones. So instead in the multi-frame setup, mathematically it uh, looks just the same. However, here, um, the vector gamma describes the temporal correlations of the speech signal at uh, different time frames. Um, focusing on these vectors again, and in the case of the MVDR, the vector is actually um, describing properties of the microphone geometry and possibly also of the room characteristics. So it's a signal independent quantity and thus usually easier to estimate, while for the multi-frame MVDR setup, um, it describes the correlations of the speech signal itself so it is a signal dependent quantity, and thus it is usually more difficult to estimate. Comparing the optimization goals of um, both of these approaches, the MVDR aims at minimizing the undesired power, um, or both of them actually minimize, uh, aim at minimizing the undesired power, while the MVDR, however, aims also at preserving the spatial speech correlations as provided by the relative transfer function vector F, uh, V. The multi-frame MVDR aims at preserving the temporal speech correlations as um, yeah, given by the so-called speech interframe correlation vector gamma. And both of these approaches can also be extended to a binaural listening setup. Um, here, the aim is to preserve the speech correlations at both ears, so at the left and the right ear, be it either the spatial or the temporal correlations. To introduce the, you into the um, parameters that we actually need to implement this filter, um, here's the optimization goal again. We want to minimize the undesired power at the output while preserving the left and right um, speech components, correlated speech components, which is solved by this equation here. And um, this means that in order to implement this filter, we require estimates of the undesired covariance matrix, phi u, as well as the speech interframe correlation vector gamma x, both for the left and for the right ear separately. So comparing this to previous work, um, this is just a binaural extension. And um, the DNN part is what makes this filter actually deep. 
So let's briefly work through a block diagram of this approach, starting with the estimation of the covariance matrices. Um, here we use a DNN where the inputs are the concatenated binaural STFT logarithm magnitudes and um, the cosine of the phase. This DNN is trained using a speech enhancement um, loss function that is defined at the output of this filter. And going over to the a priori SNR, which is an intermediate parameter that we also need to estimate. Um, the inputs here are the logarithm of the noisy STFT magnitudes, since we assume that um, phase information is not important here. And again, it is jointly trained with the previous DNN using a loss function defined at the output of this filter. Afterwards, we can use the estimated quantities in order to derive our speech interframe correlation vector estimate, which is then used to compute the filter coefficients for the left and for the right ear separately. And after applying these left and right filter coefficients to the noisy input signals Y, we get our um, binaural output Z. To implement this filter, we use the same STFT parameters as for the weighted BLCMP beamformer with a filter length of N equals four. And this means that for the speech correlations, we can actually exploit a temporal context of 12.5 milliseconds. For the DNN architecture, we use causal temporal convolutional networks, which we have seen um, multiple times before now, with a receptive field size that was chosen to be larger than two seconds in order to cover the interferer in the beginning of each scenario. And furthermore, yeah, the, the whole network has a total size of 3 million parameters that we used. In order to train this network, we use the official training data set, um, the SI SDR loss function, and the RMW optimizer. All right, let's uh, briefly continue with the hearing loss compensation stage. Here, we are actually considering two different um, options. The first option that we use in submission E16 is a simple broadband gain uh, based on the half gain rule. And for or the second system for submissions E19 and E21 is the baseline multiband uh, dynamic range compressor, which uses frequency and hearing loss dependent gain based on the compressive Kempfert prescription rule. To summarizing uh, our different submissions here, all of the submissions use the beamformer as the first stage. Only E21 uses the deep post filter as the second stage. And concerning hearing loss compensation, um, for E16, we use the simple broadband gain. While for E19 and 21, um, we use the baseline DRC system. All right, going over to the experimental results and starting with the objective evaluation. Here on the right, you can see violent plots showing the MBSTOY, the listener dependent um, MBSTOY results on the development data set. And you can clearly see that all of the submitted systems outperform the baseline system. Um, however, if you compare the submitted systems, the performance is um, almost identical. So there are very insignificant differences in between. And if we do the same consideration on the evaluation data set, um, the tendencies are yeah, exactly the same. If we take a closer look at the preliminary subjective evaluation, um, first of all, note that out of the three systems, we were allowed to choose two, where we chose E19 and E21. Um, so we kicked out the most basic one. And um, in this case, we are also Consist, uh, concerning ourselves with the different um, speech and noise and speech and speech conditions, so in blue and in orange. Comparing the blue boxes, the results are again very similar for the submitted systems. However, for the speech and speech condition, um, there's a much higher variance in E21. And looking a bit more closely into this, here you can see the exact same results, but also plotted per listener. Um, left condition noise and on the right is speech and speech. So if we focus now on speech and speech for E21, where we had this higher variance, we can see that there's a number of listeners, for example, this one here and this one, where the percent correctness drops down to exactly 0%, which means, um, yeah, which might be related to the issues that we have also talked about before. And um, yeah, this is an explanation of the higher variance there. So um, let's also briefly test whether we can actually play some audio demos here. And we just chose the two first utterances of the evaluation set containing an interfering speech and interfering noise scenario. And um, I will just play back from top to bottom, starting with the interfering speech. Note that this is already adapted for a specific listener, so 104 and 106. I'm playing one now here. Population and higher population density. All the time Virtual we would talk in English. May cause early Could you hear something? Yes, that's working. 
All right, thanks you. And um, then I will continue with number two then. Population and higher population density. All the time we're talking about disease English. may cause early graft. All the time we would talk in English. All the time we would talk in English. All the time we would talk in English. And now continuing um, with the speech in noise scenario. But I think I have an ear for talent. But I think I have an ear for talent. But I think I have an ear for talent. But I think I have an ear for talent. So I think the main two observations here are comparing, first of all, E16 and E19. Um, the most sophisticated baseline DRC system can actually push some of the noise components over the noise gate, or that get over the noise gate. And um, comparing E19 and E21, the deep post filter in some scenarios may reduce the noise actually so that it is under the noise gate and doesn't get amplified anymore. Um, all right, so to conclude this talk, we propose several combinations of beamformer, DNN based post filter, and hearing loss compensation modules where all of the submitted systems achieved uh, considerable uh, improvements, all of them also outperforming the baseline system. In terms of MB style scores, there was a similar performance of all systems. Um, however, if we are, well, this actually means that comparing the more sophisticated D um, MB DRC stage with a more simple broadband gain, um, and also comparing the DNN based post filter or no post filter, there wasn't a significant improvement here. And comparing the listening test results, the DNN-based post filter may actually degrade the performance in some scenarios, um, yielding a drop to 0% correctness. So thank you very much for your attention. And also thanks um, for, for the uh, co-authors. And that's it. Thank you very much.